right, we are now ready for Unit 1, Quiz 2, Section A. Uh, today we need to be able to represent addition and subtraction of integers on a horizontal or vertical number line. We'll be doing that today with some real-world problems. Uh, but first let's talk about a couple of different kinds of number lines that you might see today. The first one is a horizontal number line. Okay, horizontal goes left and right, or it goes across the screen. Horizontal. And then the opposite of horizontal would be vertical. Very good. I'm sure you all said that at home. Um, v E R T. Look at that. Vertical goes up and down. Horizontal uh, goes left and right, goes across. And again today we are going to be looking at some real-world problems. I have um, four things that that you need to make sure that you're doing when you are solving real-world problems. Boy, I think I could draw a straight line, huh? Uh, there we go. That's a little better. Um, thing one, anytime you're doing a real-world problem, it is very important that you are looking for and paying attention to the keywords and uh, the important information. Okay, make sure you know what it is that's happening in the problem that you're working. All right, so we can we can highlight, we can underline, we can circle our keywords and important information. Um, second thing we need to make sure that we do is to answer what you're asked. Answer what you're asked. One of my best friends, whenever he comes in town, you know, we uh, we'll decide we want to go out to eat, and I'll say, "Hey, buddy, friend, do you want to go to Applebee's or do you want to go to 54th Street?" And my friend, he says, "Yes." I'm like, come on, buddy. I asked you where you... Uh, ah, no. Yes didn't answer my question. He was supposed to say Applebee's or 54th Street. But instead he just said yes. Okay? It's very frustrating. Make sure you answer what you're asked. All right? When you um, answer, when you respond, when you have your answer, you want to make sure that you put that answer in a good sentence. Okay? Sentence answers. And then the fourth thing, fourth thing is to, sorry, I'm going to erase that, is to make sure and show your work. Show where your answer came from. Show your work. Those four things are going to be very important to us anytime we're doing real world problems. Let's look at some integers uh, on the number line problems. Example one, I've already got ready uh, to go for you. If you need to pause uh, so that you can write it down, that's fine, but I would like you to have this in your notes, please. Uh, so here we go. The temperature is three degrees. And if it drops five degrees, what is the new temperature? All right. Normally when I think about temperature, I, my brain pictures a thermometer. Okay. And most thermometers that I've seen are vertical number lines. You can do this problem, or I'm sure there are some horizontal thermometers out there, but my brain goes straight to the vertical, so that's what I'm going to use, at least first. First thing, keywords. What, what, are, what are our keywords? What is the important information in this problem? Well, I would think that the three degrees that we're starting at is fairly important. All right. Um, oh, and right here, the word drops. Drops. The temperature is going to drop. If it drops, which way are we going to go on the number line? How often do you drop something and it goes up? Not very often, unless it's lighter than air. Uh, but we're going to drop, so we're going to move down the number line. And how far down will we go? We're going to go down five degrees. We're not going down to five degrees. We are moving down five degrees. One, two, three, four, five. 
right there. So, what is the new temperature? The new temperature, oops, the new temp, I'll just put temp, the new temp is negative two degrees. And what, again, showing my work, what was the problem that I did to get there? Well, I started at three, and then dropped is a negative word, so I subtracted five, to get that negative two. Okay, again, you can do this on um, a horiz horizontal number line as well, but if you're going to drop, if the temperature is going down, which way will you move, left or right? Probably left, since there's no more room on the right, huh? One, two, three, four, five. You're still gonna wind up at that negative two degrees. Make sense? Fantastic. Let's do another. And again, if you need to pause the video so that you can write the problem down, go for it. Mrs. Fox runs seven miles east of her house. Then she runs ten miles west. Where is she? Well, let's, um... Let's find our keywords and important information. Seven miles is going to be important. Ten miles is going to be important. What else is going to be imp important, though? How are we going to know how to move left or right on this horizontal number line? East and west. East and west. Never eat shredded wheat, right? Never eat soggy waffles. East is on the right. West is on the left. Compass rows, you've seen these before, right? Never eat soggy waffles. Yeah. All right. Well, let's assume that her house is at zero. Okay, zero. We'll just draw a little house here. Here we go. And now, if she runs seven miles east, she goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then it says that she runs 10 miles west. I'll switch colors, and now I'm going to go back the other way, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So she actually went past her house. But well, where is she? Well, she's right here. Where is this? Mrs. Fox. is she's not negative three miles remember you she's a distance from her house distance can't be negative distance can't be negative mrs fox is three miles west Oh, I'm having some problems with my pen here. Sorry about that. Yeah, oh, give me that eraser. Three miles west of her house. Boy, that looks terrible. I'm probably going to have to cut this out of the video. three miles west of her house. Three miles west of her house. Okay. And how do we get that? Well, um, you know, I guess if she started her house, we started at zero, okay? But we don't need to write down zero plus seven. Okay, well, here, let's go ahead. We started at zero, and then we added seven because we were going to the right. When, you, when you're adding, you're moving to the right. We were moving east, and then we subtracted 
10. And we ended up at negative 3. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. But the real world problem, we need a sentence answer that makes sense. She's not negative 3 miles from her house. She is 3 miles west of her house. Okay. Another example. One more for good measure. Here we've got Mr. Payne owes Mr. Lassman $6. He pays him $10. Represent this on a number line and describe the result. Keywords, important information. Uh, the 6 and the $10 are going to be important. But we also have owes and pays that are going to help us figure out whether we should be moving left or right along this horizontal number line. Now starting out, Mr. Payne owes six dollars. So really I think if you owe money, that's a negative. Not only is it not good, but it represents money that you don't have. Now he's going to pay him ten dollars. Owing is a negative, paying is a positive, so I need to move to the right $10. Now if you notice, this number line is going by twos, so I have to be careful here. That's a negative five, negative four, I've gone, I've paid $2. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I've ended up right here. So that's representing the problem on a number line, but now we need to describe the result. And really, there's more than one way to describe this result. You could say, um, one way you could do this is to say, Mr. Lassman, Mr. Lassman owes that's supposed to say owes. Let's try this again. Mr. Lastman owes four dollars change. Right? Um, Mr. Payne owed only owed him six, but he gave him, you know, probably a ten dollar bill. So Mr. Lastman owes him four dollars in change. Say Mr. Lastman owes, or you could uh, you could put it in terms of Mr. Payne and say, well, Mr. Payne uh, he gets or will get four dollars and change. Okay, so different ways to describe the result. <clears throat> Excuse me. Either Mr. Lastman owes the four dollars, or Mr. Payne needs to get the four dollars. Uh, but either way. Uh, we've represented this here. We had uh, our problem. Oh, yeah, we've got to show our work. We've got negative 6, and then we added 10 and ended up at a positive 4. So make sure you're looking for your keywords, important information, and, yeah, either moving up or down on a vertical number line or left and right on a horizontal. There will be some times when you practice where you are going to have to make your own number lines. They're not always going to be uh, nice and prettily labeled for you, uh, like the ones were here in the video. When you're making your own number lines, uh, make sure the numbers from the problem will fit, all right? But at the same time, don't make it too big. It's also important that when you set up your number lines, you have equal intervals, right? You can go... You can go by ones. You saw me do one that, uh, you know, I, I was going by, by twos. Negative four, negative two, zero, two, four. Um, going by twos each time. What you can't do, and I'll do what you can't do in red. What you can't do is skip around. You can't start at, well, I'm going to start at negative 100 and then negative 99. And you know what? I'm going to jump to about negative 30. 
and then zero five five point five and thirty four these intervals aren't equal so just you gotta make sure you're going um, by the same amount for every tick mark on your graph alright make sure those notes are done and we'll see you soon